Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Mark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to do your own research to see if a VPN is trustworthy. I'm going to be informing you the way I analyze it and then helping you discover how to do it yourself. Now, of course, most of these metrics are taken directly from the VPN tierless system. And if you're too lazy, I've already pretty much rated every VPN by this same metric and given points assigning to each factor. But in this video, it's going to be a good explanation to help you maybe do this yourself or understand how reviews work here on my channel. All right, guys, now a quick word from our sponsors. This video is sponsored by two VPN providers, Surfshark VPN, one of my top VPNs if you're looking for an excellent bundled offering. The bundled offering with Surfshark One Plus includes antivirus, various data breach protection features, and a data removal service called Incogni. This is a service that will go to websites like White Pages and remove your IRL information. So this is definitely a solid pickup. It's a top rated offering here on my channel. And the data broker removal service is my top recommended one since it's so affordable. Affordable. This is half as much as you're going to pay with some of the other services out there like Delete Me. So definitely a solid pickup. However, if you're looking for some other options, TorGuard is another good choice. It includes some remote VPN offerings, um, different email bundle offerings. It also includes interesting cloud proxy or um, V2 Ray options if you're in a sensory country. The basic plan also includes SOX5 proxy for torrenting, which is excellent. If you're looking for dedicated IPs, it's also very good since there's interesting bundles that are very affordable. If you want to use any of these things with TorGuard, use promo code TOMSPARK2023. With Surfshark, use my link in the description down below. It'll help support the channel. And these are two excellent products that I stand by and recommend on a daily basis. So guys, first up, we're going to be discussing the first important metric that I usually use to decide if a VPN is trustworthy or not, is if it's been sold. Old. Is your VPN originally old and made by the people who originally made it? Now, when companies get transferred hands, usually this is kind of sketchy, at least in my opinion, and generally just kind of in the community overall. Generally, what happens is you might have a very private, trustworthy company, and eventually the founders run out of money or they decide to cash out and they want to sell it to someone else to make more money. However, usually when this happens, it's usually sold to a bigger company that's not quite as trustworthy, not as home run, not as transparent. We've seen this happen with ExpressVPN, Private Internet Access, IPVanish, and more recently, OVPN. In each one of these examples, I think the communities were kind of disappointed to see these VPNs sell. And most of these examples, the original companies were much more trustworthy than the companies they later sold out to. Take, for example, OVPN sold to Pongo. OVPN was one of the most trusted VPN providers and trusted by me as well because it had court precedents of no logs. It was very transparent with its overall leadership. I interviewed the CEO on my channel once, and I have a couple clips on my channel if you ever look up David OVPN on my channel if you want to watch those. But they sold to Pongo, a company that owns Hotspot Shield, and it's not generally regarded as a trustworthy and transparent of a company. And now OVPN is not really recommended too much due to that. It's just not as trustworthy anymore. So like I said, the first thing you need to look for is if your company has changed hands. Usually you could do this by looking up is this VPN owned by the original owners or has anyone ever sold or bought this VPN company? Additionally, the second thing you can look for if there have been any hacks or vulnerabilities. Now, you do need to do your due diligence on this one because it can vary. I've seen people like Techlore, a privacy YouTuber, kind of be misleading with how he describes security vulnerabilities. Depending on the VPN he likes, he might be very generous and say it's not a big deal. Or if it's a VPN he doesn't like, like Torgord, he might say it's a bigger deal than it is. You really do need to do your um, due diligence when researching this, and it can be hard if you're not technical minded. However, I'll give you a couple examples here in this video, namely the incident of TorGuard. Now, a lot of TorGuard haters out there say that TorGuard was hacked, it leaked this private key, or it had some service compromise and things like that. However, if you look at the original incident, both Nord and Viking VPN had stored the private keys on a remote server, and these servers got compromised or there was some issues with them. 
TorGuard server also got compromised because they were using the same server hosting provider, but they did their proper security on their end and they didn't store their private key on that server. So no information was compromised at all. And nobody could have ever looked at the kind of stuff on the servers where that wasn't the case with Nord and Viking VPN. So that is a perfect example about how you really do need to kind of look more into these issues and use technical and critical thinking to understand these issues and how these vulnerabilities have affected these VPN providers. Additionally, some other VPNs like Winscribe, for example, had a serious issue where their extension was leaking IPs on Google Chrome for months and the team took a while to fix it. That was a pretty big issue. Not many people really like to talk about that one because it made the company look pretty bad. Additionally, they also had some issues um, getting a server seized and they didn't encrypt their servers properly. It wasn't really the same issue as TorGuard VPN since so they handled it better. But in this case with Winscribe, they didn't handle it very well at all. So like I said, you really do need to make sure if there's any hacks or vulnerabilities with the VPN provider you're using. Additionally, you need to understand, you know, the severity of them or if it could be a good thing that they were protected in the end. Number three, how transparent is the VPN with its location? Now, there are some YouTubers, like I said, with TechLore kind of spreading misinformation about the importance of being a VPN in the five and 14 eyes and stuff like that. However, that's not really important. What is important is how transparent a VPN is about its location. Now, ironically, while I don't necessarily trust OVPN anymore necessarily because they sold out and are owned by a different company, I did find this clip that I talked to him about years ago at this point, uh, the importance of 5 and 14 eyes and why it doesn't actually matter. Check out this clip. I've seen a lot of people so make the case that, you know, you shouldn't use a VPN if it's based within a certain country uh you know like the five or 14 eyes um i think sweden is within the 14 eyes um so do you think this could be a good example of maybe it's more about the company and you know the transparency or integrity of not you know keeping stuff when they say they're not rather than like the jurisdiction do you have any thoughts on that yeah um so i have quite a lot of thoughts about the 14 eyes mm -hmm. just because <laughs> i mean we have just proven that it's totally irrelevant mm -hmm. i do that it's mainly a marketing scheme. Um, I don't really see the benefit of a company being in a tax paradise. I mean, Panama or Gibraltar. British Virgin Islands. The, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I think that's shadier. Um, but if we just talk about the 14 eyes, it's basically a military uh, signal alliance. So it's for the military to share intel about various threats that they're aware of. It's not about spying on all citizens in the country and beaming that back to the United States. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they, they don't really care about people torrenting or streaming stuff or just the basic kind of like mass surveillance that, you know, that's not like really what they're doing, right? No, they're not allowed to according to Swedish law. Mm -hmm. uh, at least. And it's different in every country, but the 14 eyes, it's a military alliance to share information about potential threats now personally for me i don't really like using vpns that are based in panama or the british virgin islands like nord or express i prefer vpns that are based more transparently in a place where they're kind of subject to legal rulings um perhaps if they're doing something shady or there's just like subject to the laws that i am um, we don't really, I don't necessarily want my personal VPN provider to kind of be immune to the pressures of uh, obeying the law necessarily. I don't think that's a good thing. However, you know, it might not be the end of the world if they are based in some of these locations. But generally, um, I prefer VPNs, and you probably should too, that VPNs that are transparent about their location. Now, TorGuard is very open about being based in the United States. Some other VPNs are very open about being based where they are. Something like Molvad is based in Sweden. Something like Proton is based in Switzerland. Um, I just don't really like when VPNs like Proton specifically market their VPN as being better because it's based in Switzerland compared to the United States. Whereas recently, Switzerland has had concern concerning privacy laws come up themselves. Um, although Proton claims are not subject to those, but at the same time, a US VPN provider is also able to protect their users in a, a good way too, because they're part of the legal process here in the United States. So really, you gotta think about that. Transparency is key when discussing location. If a VPN is kind of obfuscating in a cell location, personally for me, I'm not a big fan of that, but it kind of depends on your opinion.
Number four, does the website have trackers on its website? Are they tracking you with uh, various analytic tools like Google Analytics? This is kind of a kind of a red flag to kind of see that the VPN might be collecting more data on you than the, you think they would be. Um, most of the big VPNs do this, which is unfortunate, but that is probably how they are really optimizing their sales strategy and getting to be such big companies. So it's something to think about. Next up, we can talk about logging policy. Now you do want to do a kind of a brief overview of a logging policy. Most VPNs don't collect many logs. Um, there are a couple like um, Hala VPN and pretty much every VPN on the app store that's not a big VPN, like smaller VPN providers on iOS and Android, definitely collect logs. Free VPNs usually collect logs, so keep a lookout for that. One of the last things I want to talk about when doing your own research, you may want to look into seeing if your VPN is court proven to not collect logs. Now, there really are only two VPNs, so I've kind of done the research for you, that being OVPN and TorGuard. Private internet access might be a case here because they refuse to give up logs due in some court cases. However, that was before the previous owners, Cape, took over the company, so it's kind of a little murky there. TorGuard specifically was sued by some Hollywood companies for um, allowing its users to torrent or something like that. They refused to give them any information, came to some settlement to block U.S. torrent traffic for some amount of time. And nowadays, you could torrent fine on U.S. servers and it's not an issue, but the transparent case of them not giving away any user information when requested by a court was proven, so they're court proven not to collect any logs or give away customer information information even when pressed by courts so thumbs up for tour guard ovpn like i said is another example they were sued by um companies and someone was using ovpn with a pirate bay or something like that they refused to give up blogs so that was good court precedence for them but again they now sold to pongo so yeah it's not quite as a good look for them now, I already discussed some things not to consider. I don't think some things are important. Um, like I said, some people on YouTube um, like TechLore and some other people like to tell you to not use a VPN based on the 5 or 14 eyes. They'll specifically tell you not to use a VPN based in the United States, or they'll say that it's a con that it's based there. Um, in my opinion, this is not something that should be considered. I don't think you should use VPN based in Russia, Iran, China, maybe even Australia, Egypt, especially some of these places, but there aren't really any VPNs based in those countries. If you're using a VPN that's based in the United States, that's probably fine. If you're using a VPN based in any kind of major country like Europe or anything like that, it's probably fine as well. Next up, open source. How important is this? Well, a lot of people like to say you should only use open source VPNs like iVPN and Molvad. Um, or maybe even Proton. However, you got to keep in mind that these VPNs are open sourcing their clients, but not necessarily open sourcing their servers and backend stuff. Um, so it's really not as much of a benefit as you might think it is. You can't really see the code in that sense of the servers and everything. Um, you really could just kind of see the application code. And honestly, it's not as big of a deal as you might think it is because it's just a user interface and shows how you connect to servers and pretty much all VPNs do that. Additionally, there are some VPNs here on the channel that I really think nail all the other marks and not having open source isn't really a nail in the coffin because if you're trustworthy in almost every other sense, but you don't have one little thing, um, well, you know, it's not the end of the world in my opinion. Both TorGuard has proven not to collect logs in court and something like Hide.me isn't open source either, but it's extremely trustworthy in a lot of other areas. A couple other things you might not want to consider as much as you might think is something like a warrant canary or maybe even a no log audit. A lot of VPNs just don't really use warrant canaries anymore because they're kind of pointless. Um, you know, companies can be forced to compel not to update a warrant canary in court, so they're not really that useful. Additionally, transparency reports, not every VPN has the time to do them or do them often. It's usually a kind of a good thing, I would say. However, if they don't do them, it's not necessarily a deal breaker either because some of the other aspects I could discuss prior are more important, like if they went into court to prove they don't collect logs. And it also kind of depends on how much information they're collecting on their website like I said, when it comes in trackers and things like that. All right, guys, I hope you I educated you on how to pick a trustworthy VPN provider. Like I said, there's a lot of important things to consider. There are some things to consider that other people tell you to consider that aren't as important in my opinion, something like five or 14 eyes, open source clients, um, transparency port, no log audits, and even warrant canaries. I don't think those are important as the other things as I mentioned, and most people kind of fail to mention some of those things. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you again very soon.